for a great matchup. The Cincinnati Reds and the Milwaukee Brewers. Right now the Brew Crew in a tie for first with the Cardinals. St. Louis lost yesterday to the Dodgers. The Reds got swept by the New York Yankees. The Pirates leapfrog them. It is a tight race in the NL Central. Hi everybody. We welcome you from Miller Park. Great to have you with us alongside Bill Schroeder. I'm Brian Anderson. Telly Hughes our reporter tonight and let's get into this great pitching matchup rock. You've got Matt Latos on the mound for the Cincinnati Reds. Willie Peralta will get the start for the Brew Crew. Going to be plenty of heat in tonight's game. Yeah a couple of power runs. Matt Latos had to leave his last start against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Had some back spats and he has been outstanding. He's pitched some very good games against the Brewers but Kind of a tough luck pitcher here at Miller Park. 0-3 in five starts against the Brewers here at Miller Park. The Reds have lost all five of those games. The Brewers are certainly hoping that that trend continues. And the guy that could really have an impact on that, Willie Peralta, brilliant his last time out. He made his start against the Cardinals right before the All-Star break. Couldn't have pitched any better. Able to avoid a sweep against the St. Louis Cardinals. Found his slider again. Two starts before that. Didn't have the breaking ball. The slider opened up the big big sinker and outstanding for Willie his last time out. Well, Peralta, like his last time, is in a big spot. The Brewers need a victory coming off a series loss against the Washington Nationals. Peralta looking for win number 11. Latos, it's been an injury-filled year. We'll see how he comes back from problems with his back in his last start. We'll talk to the skipper when we come back. Telly Hughes sits down with Ron Renneke. That's coming up next on Fox Sports Wisconsin.
Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Miller Lite, now in the original can. It's Miller time. By Toyota, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. The Brewers are back at Miller Park for the first series since the All-Star break to kick off a seven-game homestand with the first three coming against the Cincinnati Reds. Hello and thanks for joining us for Brewers Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin. I'm Telly Hughes. The Brewers enter play tonight tied for first with St. Louis in a division that only two and a half games separate the top four teams. Now we all know there's still a ways to go, but I had a chance to catch up with the always even killed Ron Renicki to talk about how he can make sure his team stay as level level-headed as he is. I think they all know that uh, how long the season is and the grind of it, and and uh, we were all excited about how we started out, and then we hit this spell that, that uh, we didn't play that well, and, and they still realize we've got a long ways to go. We need to win this game tonight, not be concerned about tomorrow or the next series, and I think as long as we uh, worry about tonight and just playing the best baseball we can, that we'll be okay. Willie Peralta gets the rock to kick off of a crucial NL Central Division clash between the Brewers and Reds. First pitch is next. Set up for a beautiful night for baseball in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Clear skies up above 83 degrees as we get ready to start the homestand tonight. The Cincinnati Reds here for three, then the New York Mets for four. And it's Willie Peralta on the mound against Brian Price and the Cincinnati Reds, first year skipper of the Reds, coming off a series sweep at the hands of the New York Yankees and the Reds are now 51 and 47 two and a half back of the Brewers and the Cardinals Billy Hamilton leads off skip Schumacher then Todd Frazier middle of the order is all-star Devin Mezzarocco 
Donald Lutz gets to call it first. Chris Heisey in left. And then the bottom three, Ramon Santiago, Zach Cozart, Matt Latos. That's the Associated Bank. Cincinnati batting order facing Willie Peralta. And Willie's won six of his last seven decisions and making start number eight against the Cincinnati Reds here tonight. Outstanding his first time out back on May 2nd. A two to nothing win at Great American Ballpark, and he drove in the only two runs of the ball game. Very yeah. good his last time out, as we talked about on our broadcast open tonight. Still one of his best starts of the year at this point, although he's coming off one of his better starts as well. He went seven innings, no earned runs against St. Louis, and that was a much needed outing from Willie Peralta. That was the final day before the All-Star break, put the Brewers in first place, and they still remain in first place, albeit in a tie with the Redbirds starting play today. The speedster Billy Hamilton leads off first pitch on the way and away we go as Peralta misses low and away. Hamilton comes in with a 278 batting average. Has five homers 38 runs batted in. And 38 stolen bases this year a guy. You got to keep off the base pads and a quick shovel by Reynolds Oda Peralta for out number one. And that's how the night begins for Big Willie Peralta. Rock, how about the defense behind him, courtesy of Menards? Well, no real surprise. This shooter, Jeanette, back at second base. You got the right hander, Latos, on the mound. Mark Reynolds at first. Logan Schaefer gets going with the matchups is Ron Renicki. Schaefer in left. Davis sits this one out. Logan Schaefer, four for nine, career against Latos. So the Brewers skipper trying to get some offense in that lineup. David Rackley calling the balls and strikes tonight. Brian Gorman, Chris Segal, and Tony Randazzo on the bases. The crew chief is over there at first. Brian Gorman has Peralta deal strike one to skip Schumacher. Schumacher just coming back from a concussion. Put on the seven-day concussion disabled list. He did start in yesterday's game. He played second base yesterday in New York was two for three yesterday he gets the call in right field here tonight so Brian Price searching for some offense and sticks with a hot bat in Schumacher as Peralta pulled the string on him an early change up from Willie to get to one and two now it's good to see Willie throw some changes particularly early in the count we talked about how good his slider was against St. Louis and that's why he was able to put together such a good outing you can add that change up. Look out. And a base hit. So back to the fastball, and Schumacher shoots one into left field. And he's a hot hitter lately for the Reds. Man, 97 on the fastball for Willie. Been a while for Peralta. Hasn't been out there in quite some time. Made his start the last game before the All Star break and working on eight days rest. So you figure he's going to feel pretty strong. There's a nice stroke by Schumacher to get it going for the Reds. And in that start for Peralta, he went seven innings and only needed 80 pitches to get through seven innings. Could have easily finished that game or at least come back out for the eighth. But Ron Renneke felt like with the All-Star break coming, the Brewers had a big lead. They won that game 11 to 2. Might as well take the opportunity to, to put him in a little bit of shutdown mode and give him that extra break. He knew he was going to get a week off. Very successful start, and we'll see how he charges it back up for this very important final run to the season. Now you figure the arm's going to feel pretty good. It's just a matter of whether he's going to have his location. Off-speed stuff with such a long layoff. Facing Todd Frazier with one away and Schumacher at first. Reds have had their troubles offensively and they are without two of their big bats in Votto and Brandon Phillips both on the disabled list. But Frazier has been a shining star in Cincinnati. An all star this season for the first time. He's hit 20 homers has 54 driven in. Plays an excellent third base as well. Yeah, one of the few regular starters in the lineup for the Reds tonight. Bouncing ball to Jeanette. Chance to turn it here. Segura on the relay in time. It goes 4-6-3. And a good start for Willie Peralta. Brewers are coming up.
Tonight in America's Dairy Land. Great to have you with us here this evening. Ron Renneke trying to get his club back in the win column. They won one ball game in Washington, D.C. Lost a heartbreaker yesterday on a walk-off by Jason Wirth. Renneke's batting order is brought to you by Associated Bank. He's got Gomez back in the leadoff spot. Scooter Jeanette, then Ryan Braun make up the top of the order. Ramirez, Lucroy, and Schaefer in the middle for Renneke tonight. Mark Reynolds, Gene Segura, and Willie Peralta round it out. And that's the starting nine that will face Matt Latos. And Rock, you see, it's only his seventh start of the year, but an injury filled season for him, including his last start, which was cut short due to back problems. Yeah, and he didn't make his first start this year until June 14th. That came against the Brewers. He started the year on the disabled list, a right elbow injury, and then a left knee. And one of the reasons why he hasn't been able to stay out there too often, making start number 11 against the Brewers in his career, a three and four record for him against the Brew Crew. Has not won a ball game here at Miller Park, even going back to his days as a San Diego Padre. So ready to go here in the bottom of the first. Carlos Gomez in his return to Miller Park after his all star performance. Got a nice hand from this. Miller Park crowd. They had a nice video montage of all of the All Stars. A little bit of a recap for the fans here at Miller Park. They did well, didn't they? Yes, they did. Gomez, uh, certainly Luke Croy, and Aramis Ramirez, Frankie Rodriguez had a scoreless inning. Back to business, though, and the Brewers with 62 games remaining after tonight. This is game number 100 of the season for Milwaukee. Where'd that go? Yeah, right. First pitch to Gomez is down and in. It's going quick, hadn't it? Or quick lead. Well, if you'd have said uh, after 100 games you'd be in a first place tie or in the thick of a pennant race, you'd have taken it, even though the Brewers have uh, fallen back to the pack with poor play over the last three weeks, two and a half weeks of games. Dropping 13 of their last 16 games. And as Ron Renneke Ever the glass half full manager says that means we're that much closer to a winning streak. And they're hoping the winning streak can begin here on this homestand. Gomez gets a bunt down. And Latos will make the play for the out. First out for Latos. Well, let's check out the Reds uh, defense brought to you by Menard, the best defensive team in the National League. But some guys in the lineup that ordinarily aren't there, Heisey and left. Get Schumacher in right. No Jay Bruce tonight. We got Donald Lutz, bottom on the disabled list. Santiago at second because no Brandon Phillips. So a rough stretch for the Reds. Not not a lot of their regulars in the lineup here tonight. Might earn them a fine if this was a spring training game, right? <laughs> not enough big leaguers. But no, they've got some guys that are filling in gaps and they're going to have to stick with them over the next month or so. They're talking about Brandon Phillips and Joey Votto as being out for around five more weeks. And Brian Price is hoping those two players come back strong. Big Donald Lutz called up from Triple A, getting the start at first base. And losing the right side of your infield and you know two key components of your offense. That's uh those are big losses for the Reds. Scooter Jeanette back in the two spot of the order. Jeanette did not start yesterday had a pinch hit appearance in yesterday's loss against Washington had a base hit and battling a leg injury kind of a leg problem that's given him some issues and got a base hit and then Ron Redke forced a pinch run for him and we'll keep an eye on that leg tonight two balls and a strike and Jeanette into center field Hamilton scampers back and he's got it for out number two. Hey, gaps are going to be tight in this game tonight with Gomez and Billy Hamilton in center field. That'd be a race I'd pay to see right yeah. there. I'd like to uh, line them up. We've got a little bit of the remnants of the soccer field still in place. We could line them up and let them go. You're talking about just a straight 100 yard dash or I how about so. around the bases? Uh, maybe uh, like we used to do in Little League when uh, you know you'd run opposite ways and see who'd make it to home place for <laughs> home plate first. Yeah. That would be a good race. You always had to avoid that collision at second base, though, didn't you? 
It was never at second for me. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway between first and second. So always on your half of the uh, of the right. track. Yeah, I was never uh, at second base the same time the other guy was. <laughs> what a great game. Ryan Braun digs in with two outs. Latos gets ahead of him quickly. And Braun shoves one into left field to base hit. So a two out single Ryan Braun back to his hitting ways. He did have a hit yesterday it was one for three and a couple of walks. Almost hit one out the right field in the ninth inning that would have given the Brewers a two run lead but came up a little bit short fastball for Latos 91 to 93 with a fastball for Latos. He's got some movement on it. And you can see how Ryan Braun able to open up those hips stay down on that baseball and bang it into left field. Good shot of the Ryan Braun swing. Classic swing doesn't change much. And a check on Braun. Braun making some headlines with his base running yesterday throughout that Washington series. Good heads up base running scoring from second base with a little ground ball. We'll see if Ramirez can. Keep it going at the plate. Had a great All Star game. He did take the collar yesterday in Washington. He was 0 for 3. He did draw a walk and he scored a run. But run producers like Ramirez do not like leaving runners on base. He left three of them on yesterday and that burns him up a little bit. Yeah, a couple of times he came up with runners in scoring position and to no avail. Lazy pop up. Will it stay playable? Lutz is there and he's got it for the out, and the side is retired. So we're off and running at Miller Park. One inning in the book, scoreless. We head to the second. And Willie Peralta back on the mound got a double play to end the last inning. There is Jeremy Jeffress back in the big leagues for the Brewers. This is uh, quite a move here for Milwaukee and returns to the organization that originally brought him to the major leagues. Rob Wooten was sent back to Triple A, and Jeffress was a bit of a surprise selection for Milwaukee, but uh, he is back in the major leagues after a terrific run. In Triple A Nashville was uh, traded. You might remember in the Zach Greinke deal from Milwaukee to Kansas City, traded from the Royals to the Blue Jays, got released by the Blue Jays, and uh, is now a Milwaukee Brewer again. Man, I think Ron Rennick excited to have him because he's looking for a power arm down there in the bullpen from the right side. Right now you got K Rod, Marco Estrada is a long man. He's not available probably tonight. And then you got Kinsler. And none of those guys are really the flamethrowers that you'd like to see out of the bullpen. So Jeremy Jeffers can get it up there in the mid 90s if he throws the breaking ball from strip for strikes. He can be very tough to hit. 
So the Brewers have their power arm down in the, in the bullpen right now. Mazzarocco hit by a pitch as Peralta comes inside. And a base runner to start the second inning. The Reds all star catcher is aboard. You see Luke Roy setting up inside just got away from him a little bit hit him on the jersey. That's not going to hurt too much. Well, but if you're going to miss inside. That's where you want to miss in off the plate not over the plate. Well, Mazzarocco another guy's had a great year for Cincinnati offensively. One of the top hitting catchers in the National League. And hit by a pitch on a 2 1 count. So a base runner for Donald Lutz, big power hitter in Triple A, called up. When Joey Votto was placed on the disabled list, Votto's injury is right above the knee, the lower quad, right above the knee. And he looked very hobbled at Votto the last time the Brewers saw Cincinnati. That was over the 4th of July weekend. And went on the disabled list right after that. They could barely swing the bat. He did not look good at all. So Lutz gets an opportunity. And talking to these uh, folks around this Reds ball club, they say some of these guys have uh, taken advantage of their opportunities. They're like Santiago at second base. He's done a nice job. Lutz can, once he starts getting into the group, can hit some homers. 6'3, 250 pounds. Donald Lutz. And Lutz hit 10 home runs in AAA. Had good numbers down there. 284 batting average with those 10 home runs. Pushing 30 runs batted in. Triple A club for Cincinnati is in Louisville in the International League. One ball, two strikes on Lutz. Kind of strange to see a Reds lineup without. Joey Votto and Jay Bruce. Yeah, Bruce getting the day off. He hadn't been swinging a bat all that well. But Brian Price figuring I'm going to give him the day off and see what these other guys can do. After getting swept by the Yankees. Jay Bruce mired in a long slump. 0 for 15 at the plate. And Schumacher gets the start in right field here tonight as Lutz swings and misses. Down he goes. Good block by Lucroy. And the first strikeout of the night for Willie Peralta. Yep, 90 miles an hour. I think he put a little wrinkle into that pitch. Check it out. A 90 mile an hour slider. We said that because he's pitching on eight days rest that he might have something behind these pitches tonight. 90 miles for a slider. I don't remember him throwing one like that. And let's not even close. The way that baseball skip stays down, that's why you got to stay down on your knees, keep that glove on the ground if you're trying to block it. Another breaking ball. Chris Heise, a big swing and a miss. Heise's been one of the forgotten players in that Cincinnati Reds outfield. We hardly saw him over the 4th of July weekend. He just had one at bat in that three game series. He does have good numbers against Willie Peralta though and that's why he's in the lineup. Five for ten lifetime. And one of those five hits a home run. He started all three games against the Yankees. He's been swinging a bat hitting some homers. And the Reds like the Brewers trying to find offense. Who would have thought right. Right. This team was uh, supposed to be led by Bruce and Votto and Phillips and Certainly they had high hopes for Todd Frazier. Frazier's held up his end. Phillips was having a good year before the injury. That was a devastating loss. For Cincinnati. And you think about the shape of this National League Central with the Cardinals. Losing Yadier Molina. And they're talking eight to twelve weeks for Molina's injury. Brandon Phillips. With an injured ligament. On his. Left thumb Molina's was the right thumb Molina's a little more severe than uh, Phillips so they're talking maybe Phillips will be back in a month and a half. But those are big ones and the Brewers certainly know they need to take advantage now. With so many matchups at the end of the year against the same division. One and two to Heisey. 
count evens at two and two. And Brewers have, including tonight, nine more games against the Reds, bunch of games against the Cardinals. And that's what you want to see at the end of the season to determine who's going to you know, win that division, get to the postseason. Anybody's race at this point. Heisey able to lay off the slider this time. And the count goes full. Heisey went 0 for 4 yesterday in New York. Had a modest five game hitting streak going. Mazzarocco takes off. The pitch is low. Ball four. So Heisey draws the walk. That's a good at bat by Heisey. Fell behind early. Able to draw the walk. Saw the Reds put their catcher in motion because of all the ground ball outs that Willie can get trying to stay out of the double play. Just at the bottom of the strike zone. Not by much. Luke Croy. Looked as though he wanted to make a throw to second base just in case. Well, the fact that Lucroy came out of the shoot to make a throw might have gotten Heisey a ball right there. That looked like it was right at the bottom of the zone, according to Fox Tracks. Well, you're taking a gamble when you take pitches that close with two strikes. Pays off for him, though. Here is Ramon Santiago now. Well, I guess, wouldn't you, if the strike zone is what it is? Anything close why swing at it pretty good chance is going to be called a ball. That's a huge call early in this game because that most likely with a decent throw by Lucroy is going to turn into a strike him out throw him out double play to in the inning instead two on with one out and Santiago at the plate. A little jam shot shallow center field Gomez will run it down. And out number two. And playing shallow to start made that one look easy. Hey, Thursday, July 24 through Sunday, the 27th, David Wright and the New York Mets come to town for an important four game series right here at Miller Park. Call 414 902 4000 or go to Brewers.com to reserve your spot at Miller Park today. Brewers are going to have Garza, Gallardo, Peralta, and Jimmy Nelson in that series as probables. Mets will have Dylan G, Zach Wheeler, Jonathan Neese, and Jacob DeGrom. Mets have been playing pretty well. Starting to look like a two horse race in the National League East, but the Mets are hoping that they can make a bit of a push here. They've won seven of their last 10 New York, but still eight games back in the division standings. Bouncing ball to short, Kozar to Segura. And the side is retired. So Peralta pitches out of a jam in the second. Strands a couple.
coming up here in the bottom of the second in a scoreless game. And the Brewers have been alone or tied in first place in the National League Central since April 5th. And they're going to try to stay there against a division rival they have not had much success against. They've gone just 3-7 and seven against the Reds. So we're asking Brewers fans to weigh in and tell us which team you think will be the biggest threat to the Brewers for the division lead. So, of course, they're tied with the Cardinals. The Cardinals are off tonight. Pittsburgh just a game and a half back. The Reds two and a half games back. And looking ahead to the September schedule, it is NL Central heavy, all of them against division opponents with the exception of one series. So it's a race that will surely tighten up as we go on here, B.A. And it's starting to look like the best division in baseball for the second consecutive season. Last year, the National League Central sent three teams to the postseason. The Cardinals won the division. Reds and the Pirates made it into the wild card. And then Cincinnati lost to Pittsburgh, and that sent Dusty Baker packing. That's why Brian Price, who was the pitching coach last year, took over as manager this year. It's a jam-packed race, all separated by two games in the loss column. The top four teams, and Renneke's hoping his ball club is the one who gets hot. And they're about due to turn the corner, hopefully sooner than later, as Lucroy leads off and takes a ball from Latos. And the Brewers 9 and 10 against the Reds last year in 19 games have not had a winning season against Cincinnati since 2006. Mm. Had to change that right quick. Yeah, just three and seven this year. Last series against Cincinnati was in the Queen City and the Brewers dropped two out of three in that series. Cincinnati has very good pitching. Their starting pitching stacks up with anybody in the big leagues and of course their bullpen with Broxton and a rolled as Chapman one of the great combos in Major League Baseball as well although Chapman took a loss yesterday that Yankees walk off victory over Cincinnati Brian McCann had a little flare hit and an RBI against Chapman to give the Yankees the victory and a lot of the games that the Brewers have lost have gone right down to the wire right down to the end so walk off wins for the Reds as good as their pitching is and as big a names that they have on their offense somebody's beating them. And we just haven't been able to figure them out. And no player no coach manager will admit it but there's got to be something psychological to facing a team this much and not having success. It's a lot like the Pirates and the Brewers in reverse. Brewers have had a lot of success against Pittsburgh over the years including this year. With 10 wins already, and at some point you gotta step across that threshold. It starts with Cincinnati just being a very good ball club Absolutely. to begin with. Yep. Good solid defense. They don't beat themselves, they don't walk many batters, so you gotta beat them. And you just gotta take uh, you know, take it one step at a time. I mean, it's an old cliche, but when you're talking about you know, the Brewers in the midst of some struggles right now, losing 13 of 16. You can't worry about the big picture game. You got to worry about, in Luke Croy's case, worrying about the pitch, getting a good pitch to hit, getting a good swing on it, making a play defensively. If you're pitching, you, you know, throw strikes, good, good quality strikes. The little things, little things turn into big things in this game. Early in the season, the Brewers were doing all the little things right. Not so much lately. Well, Luke Croy with a good at bat going, hanging tough against Matt Latos. Three balls, two strikes to count on the All Star starter behind the plate. Got two of the three All Star catchers in this series with Luke Croy and Mezzarocco. Payoff pitch coming from Latos. And Luke Croy pops it up, got in on his hands. It's going to be Lutz who makes a call in the catch. Luke Croy retired. Well, both of these teams were walked off yesterday. Jason Worth got the Brewers in D.C. and in New York. It was Brian McCann. Thought he had popped out, but this ball falls between three Cincinnati Reds. A 100-foot walk-off pop-up. And that's how the game ended as Ellsbury scored. What a way to lose, huh? Hey, Cincinnati Ruth. swept by New York. A routine pop-up, and everybody's... Looking at each other and it drops and the Reds lose the game. Well. Wow. 3-2 final score in that one. 
Cincinnati didn't do much offensively in that series. They were dismal with runners in scoring position. And a tough offensive series against the Yankees. Man, it's two runs yesterday. Scored just one in a 7 1 loss on Saturday and got beat 4 3 in the opener of that series. Quickly 0 2 on Logan Schaefer. Schaefer gets a call in left field today. Chris Davis the day off. And playing the matchups, you give Davis a day off. Logan Schaefer's had good numbers against Latos. And Chris Davis has not. Latos strikes out Schaefer for his first K. Took something off and a punch out, big curveball from Latos. And he'll flip this up once in a while. That spike curveball, you can see Latos, the index finger digging into the seams, and that gives him that good biting spinning action and straight down. A good pitch. And a change of pace off of his 93 mile an hour fastball as well. Here's Mark Reynolds now at two away. In the air, right center, pretty well hit. Hamilton wants it. And just shy of the track will make the catch. And a 1 2 3 inning for Latos and the Reds. Scoreless after two at Miller Park. and Reds and I'm pleased to be joined by Brewers Chief Operating Officer Rick Schlesinger who is here to highlight some of the things that's going on at this homestand and it all kicks off this Friday with some giveaways Rick. Right every fan in the ballpark gets a Brewers t-shirt uh, either a men's extra large or a men's medium should fit 95 percent of the people coming in so and they're popular this is the fourth in the series of t-shirts and then Sunday Jim Henderson people ask me where's Jim Henderson he's making his summer debut here he is in the miniature version. We want him back on the field, but until then, he's a bobblehead. So every fan of tenants on Sunday, Jim Henderson bobblehead night. And how has the um, ticket sales been for the series, knowing that the Brewers are in the thick of a really tight pennant race and knowing that these home games are very important? Pretty strong, but we've always got tickets to sell. So there's tickets available for every one of these games. Obviously, the weekend games are probably going to be close to sellout. So I always encourage fans to, to buy early. But again, tickets available for our games. It's a great time to see the Brewers. We're tied for first. And this is crunch time. This is these games are meaningful and important and we're going to step it up. All right Rick thanks for your time. Thanks Ellie. All right we all love free giveaways so make sure you come <laughs> out to Miller Park this weekend guys. I got your shirt up here Telly by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I got you a small. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. Mediums. <laughs> there was no double X rock so too bad. Yeah. You don't fit in the uh, the profile of the Rick Schlesinger. That's mediums right. I'd be out of luck. Right so well well, well you're, yeah you're a five percenter. As the truck says, <laughs> that would be Mark Vittorio, actually. 
So we'll take a couple and we'll uh, we'll turn two into one for you. But they're nice shirts. It's been a nice T-shirt year. You're kind of out of luck there too, aren't you? No, no, that's perfect for me. Just gotta gotta put that on the on the hot dry. Don't talk about the medium. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it was the All-Star break. I, I put a few on. A little big. I tell you, I got to get back to my game here. Three and two to Latos, and Peralta loses the opposing pitcher. So the second walk, he's also hit a batter. I think every manager, this first run through the rotation after the All-Star break, gives their pitchers a little leeway. And a little slack with the command because they're out of their routine a little bit. But you certainly don't want to walk the opposing pitcher and especially to lead off an inning. Yeah, just underhand it to the opposing pitcher for sure. You know, last start for Willie was July 13th. Well, here today is the 21st. That's eight days. So command might be a little bit of an issue for both of these guys for that matter. Latos as well. Billy Hamilton chases one. Latos hasn't pitched since July 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was had some back problems and gonna keep an eye on Latos here tonight. Only went five innings in that game on July 11th against the Pirates. Reynolds gobbles it up. Races to the bag and Hamilton is retired. And that's the right play if you're thinking about, well, maybe you could have gotten the slow running Latos at second. You'd rather have Hamilton out at first. Odds are he's going to steal second base. Right. So you'd rather have Latos <laughs> be the lead runner and the only runner at this point. Absolutely. So. Not used to running the bases, not nearly as fast, and maybe tire him out when he goes back out there on the mound. I think Latos. Could have retired him at second base. There was time. Yep. But Reynolds made the right move. That's the kind of speed that Hamilton has. He makes you do things a little bit differently. And again, that's uh, thinking ahead for Mark Reynolds. Good job. Anticipating if the ball's hit to me, what am I going to do? So here's Schumacher now with Latos at second, and that ball gets by Lucroy. And now things change a little bit as Latos ends up. At third base with one away. And a very wild pitch. Yeah, the two seam fastball bouncing. Looked like off the plate just to the side of the plate and is eating up Luke Croy. No chance for him on a fastball like that. Just don't have time to get down and try and block it. You don't really figure a fastball to end up in the dirt that badly. Well, the Brewers are going to bring their infield in now. Expecting this to be a low scoring game, perhaps. And Renneke is going to take the gamble with Schumacher at the plate. A spot where Peralta could use a strikeout. Schumacher singled in the first. It's the only Cincinnati hit. Peralta's walked two, and he's hit a batter. And he's having a hard time finding the strike zone. Three balls, no strikes. And the dangerous Todd Frazier coming up next. Well, again, nothing wrong with the velocity, 96, 97, but location a bit shaky here in the early going. I guess you'd expect that. Big chopper. Segura's coming in. Latos coming home, and he is out. What a play by Gene Segura on a very tough hop. And the only guy you're going to get out of home plate on that is the pitcher, Latos. That ball was way up in the air. I didn't think there's any chance to get anybody on that, but yeah, good job by Segura to throw at the home plate and Latos an easy out at home. 
So the decision to get Billy Hamilton at first pays off. Heck of a play by Segura. Once he got it in his glove, that was the tough part. Threw a perfect strike to Lucroy and an out at the plate that goes six to two. And two outs in the inning for Todd Frazier. Now that's the last thing Brian Price probably wanted to see after his pitcher came out with back spasms. You have him running the bases and sliding into home plate. We'll see how that affects him mm -hmm. as we go on tonight. He doesn't look very comfortable. He was hobbling getting off the mound after that first inning. I should say second inning. Maybe caught a cleat. Kind of was grimacing a little bit. Well, if you've ever had back problems, you know the worst thing you can do is let it get cold and sit there and you know let your muscles cool off. And he's trying to. I don't know this for a fact, but the, just that's not the normal posture of a starting pitcher. Right. Normally, you're going to go in and sit and rest. But uh, Latos is pacing. Two outs in the inning. And the one on to Frazier is in there for a strike. A little bit of a delayed call. Frazier doesn't like it. One and one. Well, you establish that inside corner with that pitch. You're going to have a good night. Fastball inside corner, 95 miles an hour. Not too many hitters are going to get the barrel of the bat on that. Lucroy just continues to shine behind the plate and he's got a pitching staff for the most part all through the pitching staff that pitch in the dirt sliders in the dirt Peralta now Jimmy Nelson Garza. I mean these guys are tough pitchers to catch and keep balls in front and yeah, not too many catchers better than Luke Roy at blocking pitches for sure. Frazier leans out over one Segura the easy way and the Brewers do a nice job getting out of that inning after a leadoff walk to the pitcher. Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. Roof is open Monday night, Miller Park, Milwaukee. No score as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Great to have you with us tonight. We'll be uh, on the air tomorrow again. Wednesday's game. Not televised. And then we'll have all four games for you of the New York Mets series. Gene Segura 
Ready to lead off. Matt Latos back on the mound in a scoreless game. Segura's return to Miller Park, his first game back. Now it's been a trying couple of weeks. Can't even imagine what Segura has gone through. And this was another uh, big step in his recovery and his comeback to get back to Miller Park and the passing of his nine month old son John Yell and uh, Rock you know here's a guy that went through the first phase of it on the last road trip in Washington D.C. got the support of his teammates uh, but when you come back home now you see people that are part of the home situation here the home right. clubhouse yeah. the, uh, the fans here and you kind of got to go through that a little bit again but uh, Segura Saying he is overwhelmed at the support he has gotten from the Brewers family. Yeah, you're right. It's only you can only imagine. I mean, young kid himself. I mean, was he 24 years old, uh, far away from home, and having to deal with that? And I met back in Washington, the uh, the Washington Nationals fans gave him a nice ovation when he was first introduced. So yeah, yeah, it all helps. The baseball community, it affects everybody, not just Segura, not just the Brewers, but all the baseball. Because every one of those guys on the field. You know, put themselves in that position. They know how difficult it is being away from home. Well, Segura brings one into right center field. That's down and will bounce off the wall. Segura on his way to second and is on his way to third now. He hesitated. The ball hit him. And now the ball gets away and into the dugout. And Segura will score. A huge break. The Reds. Had a chance at an out at third base. Instead, the Brewers are on the board. Yeah, but it'll be a triple and an error to be to allow Dean Segura to score. Had that ball not hit him, he would have been out at third. Well, and everybody did what they could. That's one of those errors that you get. It was a good throw in the third base. It hit Segura in the foot. Latos was backing up, but the carom off the foot made it impossible for Latos to cover the wild throw. Segura makes a mistake to slow down and then start the third base. He would have been out had the ball not hit him. And he ends up scoring. And the home plate umpire, David Rackley, over at third base on the rotation. Right there on the call, and Segura scores on an error. Triple ended error. Segura shoots one into the gap, comes all the way around. The error will belong to the second baseman, Santiago. And here's Willie Peralta. The Brewers have the lead. Well, the Brewers would love to see Gene Segura get hot. I mean, he really hasn't been able to. Get into an extended hot streak yet this year, and well, if he's able to do that, it'd be a big shot in the arm for the bottom of this batting order. Segura did have a hit yesterday. It was one for four. Scored a run and a triple, and a run scored here in the third inning. Peralta in a two-one count, and he takes ball three. I remember when the Brewers early in the season were winning baseball games, scoring a lot of runs. The bottom of the order was a big part of it. You know, Segura, the Overbay Reynolds combination. At that point in time, Chris Davis was down batting seventh. Needs some production at the bottom for sure. Matt Leto has taken a lot of time between pitches. Three and one to Peralta, and that one is in there for a strike. We've seen Matt Latos enough, and he may push through in this game, but we've seen him enough to know that this is not his normal rhythm. Usually works with a lot more tempo and pace than this. Just checking his follow through. You know, he looks like he's. Uh, a little more upright. Well, I'm not sure what he did after that uh, last out in the second inning, but he did not look all that comfortable going back into that Reds dugout. And then he goes out and runs the bases, slides into home plate. So yeah, maybe not 100%. Full count to Peralta. 
And he's got a fastball right now at 90 91 miles an hour. After the last out, this was the Reynolds out of the second inning, the final out, the fly ball to center, and he looked like he got maybe a spike hung up and limped his way into the dugout. He immediately came out for the at bat, drew the walk, ran around the bases, and all of that. But something to keep an eye on as Peralta fouls another one off. That's a good at bat by Willie right here. Regardless of what happens, he's making him work. It'll be a nine pitch at bat to Willie Peralta. The payoff pitch again Peralta fouls another one away. Obviously the Reds aren't too concerned with Latos or they'd have somebody loosening in the bullpen. They certainly know him better. Than we do and his regular pace. Pitch number 10 of the at bat and Peralta back up the middle of base hit. So the Brewer pitcher. Looking very hitterish right there. A 10 pitch at bat that results in a single. Yep, on a 93 mile per hour fastball down the strike zone. And you see four seam grip downstairs, and Willie goes down and gets it like he knows what he's doing up there, huh? Those are the kind of hacks you see from Willie every day in batting practice. That's a good level swing, good balance, and a base hit in the center field. So a triple to lead off the inning. An error that allowed Segura to score. Now a base hit by Peralta. And back to the top of the order in Carlos Gomez. Gomez has great numbers against Matt Latos. He came in with a batting average at 400. And that's back up the middle and a base hit. So Carlos Gomez. A career 400 hitter against Matt Latos. The third straight hit in the inning. And two on with nobody out. Right, both of those pitches. One to Peralta and that one right there to Gomez right down the middle of the plate. A two-seamer this time, but look where it is. Right down the middle and Gomez doesn't try and pull. It goes right back through the middle with it. First and second, three consecutive hits for the Brew Crew. And for Carlos Gomez, his ninth career hit against Matt Latos. Nine for 22, a 409 batting average. And that'll give Scooter Jeanette a shot with two on and nobody out. Latos retired six of his first seven. Has given up three straight hits to start this third inning. Scooter flew out to center field his last time up. Just two for seven in the Washington series. It starts in the first two games in that series. In the air to center field, slicing into left center. Hamilton will make the catch. He's got a very strong arm. Peralta's going to test it here, and the throw is off the mark. And Willie goes in hard at third base. Both that. runners advance. That's unbelievable. Willie Peralta tagging up on a routine fly ball in the left field. I think he fooled everybody, particularly Billy Hamilton center. That would get the young pitcher excited. Yeah, Hamilton was ready for it. It was just throw a little bit off the mark. If that throws on the money, Willie's an easy out, but coming in a little bit too hard at third base. That's a first slide in a while for Peralta. So both pitchers having a slider ready tonight. Mm -hmm. Late toast out, Peralta safe. So Willie at third base Gomez advances to second and one gone for Ryan Braun big spot for the Brewers here to cash a few in and really good base running by Carlos Gomez to get into second to take away the double play. 
Braun singled his last time up. Pulled one through the hole between third and short. Latos did not make his first start of the year until June 14th. That was against the Brewers. As Braun fouls it away, no balls and two strikes. Now Ryan Braun, Saturday in D.C. And a long home run, power ball home run number 12. For Ryan Braun, now 54 runs batted in. Hadn't hit one in left field all that you know, in a while. Most of his home runs were coming center and left. First pitch fastball from Blevins late in the ball game on Saturday. Braun down in the count, no balls, two strikes. One gone in the inning. And Ryan lines one to left field, and that is going to go over the head of Heisey. Peralta's in. Here comes Gomez. He'll score. And that'll be a two RBI double for Ryan Braun. It's three to nothing, Milwaukee. Yeah, it doesn't look like the Cincinnati defense that we've come accustomed to. That's a big mistake by Heisey. One run certainly would have scored. Well, the bottom of the Brewers order getting things going as we've been talking about look at this a bullet misjudged by Heise. he doesn't even get a glove on it and two runs score still one out and Ryan drawn at second base well, the Reds are failing Matt Latos defensively in this inning costly mistake goes as a double two RBIs Three nothing Brewers and still just one out. Braun now at second base, his 21st double of the year, to go along with his 12 homers. And here is Aramis Ramirez trying to add to it. Yeah, the first breaking pitch that Latos threw in this inning, and Ryan Braun smokes it into left field. Maybe that's a pitch that's giving him some problems physically. Maybe who knows. Well, Ramos with 11 home runs this season, 45 driven in. Missed three weeks of the year with a hamstring injury. That was back in May, missed a half the month of May, early June, and he's hit by a pitch. Latos drills him. So Ramirez will reach. Let's hope he's all right. Got him around the hand, the wrist area. Those are always dangerous, those small bones. Oof. Actually got him right above the wrist. And on the forearm. That's not as bad down there. It is his throwing arm. Taking a little extra time to shake it off. But he'll be all right. Easy for me to say. Didn't hurt me. <laughs> I feel fine. So first and second and a visit from the Reds pitching coach Jeff Pico. It's been one of those innings. Four hits in the inning now a hit batter. I mean, just not himself. I think that's what uh, the Reds are worried about. You know the pacing is a lot different. He's not pitching the way he normally is. He usually would fix in a few more breaking pitches. This is body language itself is a little bit alarming you would think. Reds bullpen still quiet. So whatever the conversation was about Latos. Carries on here. Here's Lucroy first and second one away. Croy into left field. That'll stay playable for Heisey. Braun 
Shows tag. He'll stop. And there is the second out. Luke Roy just missed it on the bat. Well, a reminder you can catch every strikeout, every game ender, every history making moment on MLB Whip Around weeknights at 9 Central on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, Willie Peralta figures to be in the Whip Around tonight. Pitching well, three shutout innings. And contributing with a single and a run scored and uh, a key base running move. Tagging up on a fly ball to left center. That base hit on a 10 pitch at bat, making Leto's work. Logan Schaefer with two outs. He's the eighth batter of the inning. 24 pitches this inning for Leto's. Yes, Schaefer, shallow center field. Hamilton runs it down and the inning is over but the Brewers make it a good one a crooked number on the board three runs in Segura started with a triple got a fortunate bounce off the foot and then Ryan Braun on a misplay and left a two RBI double. Three run third. RBIs from Ryan Braun and the throwing air by the Reds. Carsoup.com trivia question tonight. How many current Brewers have had multiple stints with the team? How many current Brewers gave you the news of Jeremy Jeffress returning to the uh, big leagues today? His second tour with Milwaukee. Peralta back at work looking for that shutdown inning after the Brewers got him three and he was a part of it. Singling and scoring facing Mazzarocco whom he hit his last time up. Mazzarocco Lutz and Heisey coming up. Very different looking four five and six for the Reds these days. What a year Mazzarocco's had. 16 home runs this season, 46 driven in. He's been able to keep his batting average around the 300 mark this year. Hey, think about it. I mean, his position in the batting order is a lot different than it was with the big boys in the lineup. And now all of a sudden, he's one of those guys you got to worry about. You know, before it was Jay Bruce and Vada and Phillips, guys like that. And all of a sudden this guy comes up with men on base and you're stuck you got to throw him strikes. And becomes a central figure in this lineup in the absence of Votto and Phillips. Yeah, now it's a guy maybe a pitch a little bit more carefully too. He's had great numbers against the division only Paul Goldschmidt with better. 
numbers better batting average against the National League Central and a lot fewer at bats. Mazzarocco a 345 hitter. You don't normally see players from the same division put up those kind of numbers because of the extra games. Yeah they play a ton within the division for sure. And a lot of those numbers for Utley have come against the Brewers. Curious to see what happens in Philadelphia. Boy, they are talking about a fire sale in Philly. They got a lot of pieces that uh, contenders would be interested in. As Mazzarocco strikes out, Willie Peralta got him on a fastball. That is the second strikeout for Peralta and the first out of the fourth. Two seam fastball, didn't want to walk him and got him to chase one out of the strike zone. And speaking of the Phillies, Cliff Lee back on the mound tonight. And not pitching well. The Giants are in Philadelphia. San Francisco leads 5 4. Cliff Lee returning from the disabled list, giving up five earned runs in five and two thirds innings. That's another guy that you might see somewhere else. I mean, the Phillies could legitimately trade five, six players. Right. Papelbon. Papelbon. Cole Hamels has been rumored. Might even see Utley go. There's a soft liner to second. Donald Lutz is out. Two outs in the inning for Peralta. One thing we know for sure as we approach the July 31st trade deadline. There are a lot more. Uh, buyers at this point than sellers which means the. Market is pretty thin and you're going to have to give up a whole lot. And if you have something to give I mean you're going to get a lot There's going to be a lot of uh, teams. Jockeying around trying to. Show you what they have you got to have prospects and you're probably going to have to eat up some money. Everybody keeps talking about David Price and he is the one game changing arm that could be available but Tampa Bay is hot. They're playing well. They're just seven and a half back in their division. Right. And they're six and a half back in the wild card race right now the Tampa Bay race. And see the Giants picked up Dan Ugla. On a minor league deal. Right. Released by Atlanta. Dan Ugla. No balls, two strikes on Heisey. Lucroy blocks it just in case. Count goes to one and two. Let's go. Got 20 million left on that deal. Yeah, I believe it's uh, right around there. Yeah, that's yep. a lot of money to be in Triple A, huh? Ton of money. <laughs> Man. And they say minor leaguers can't make a living. <laughs> it's a pretty good living. Triple <laughs> A at the Giants system. A strike called on the outside corner. Heisey is rung up. Peralta with his best inning. Three up, three down, two strikeouts. Three Ks for the game as he rings the bell on Heisey.
of the fourth and it's now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag wistfan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast it's brought to you by AT&T good crowd tonight on a Monday night it's a beautiful night for baseball temperatures are soaring into the 90s today in Milwaukee 83 degrees as we hit the air tonight going to be even uh, hotter tomorrow we have launched into summer that's okay though good yeah. baseball weather All right no good. complaints here very pleasant inside Miller Park and clear skies up above Latos back at work we start the fourth faced eight batters in the third Brewer scored three times Reynolds on the first pitch deep in the hole Cozart makes a play for out number one one pitch and one out for Latos Reynolds is 0 for 2 and here comes Gene Segura Segura got it started last inning. Lead off triple. Even though he looked like he was going to be out at third base, the throw from the cutoff man, Santiago, hit his foot, caromed into the dugout, and Segura scored the first run. Now he ripped one into right center. One hopped it off the wall. And Johnny and Aaron Segura have been working feverishly all season long to try and get him to stay back. And good sign when he tries that when he starts driving the ball to the opposite field. And jumping at the baseball a little bit. Rolling over on pitches. Ground balls is short. There you and go. Slaps another one to the opposite field. Two real good at bats for Segura. Boy, that looks like a sign of things to come. The only way you do that is by staying back. And that's what they've been working on all season long. Two seam fastball. Watts Segura staying back, staying behind the baseball, and driving it to the opposite field. That is a nice swing. That's the Gene Segura swing of last year. Which made him an all star last season in his first full season in the big leagues. So he's on with one out, a base stealing threat. Peralta is up there. Segura takes off, and Peralta drops the bunt down. There's a Rocco, a heads up play to tag him out. That dangerous play right there. He pops it up, the inning's over. Well, you get a jump like that, just take the pitch. Well, but Willie did what he's supposed to do. Somebody missed a sign. Not sure it was Willie Peralta or Segura. I would think it would be Segura. Normally you're going to get the pitcher up there with the man at first. Drop down a bunt. Does it beautifully. And a good heads up play by Mezzarocco. But Segura had a huge jump. He did. Looked like he had that one stolen easily. Here's Gomez with two outs. And Gomez on the first pitch. Fly ball deep left. Heisey can't find it. And it bounces right behind him. Segura will score. That's a double. It's going to be a ground rule double for Carlos Gomez and RBI and Chris Heisey having all kind of trouble in left field at Miller Park tonight. Yeah, he's having a rough night out there in left. My goodness. Misjudged line drive off the bat of Braun. That cost his team a one run. And this misjudged fly ball, he couldn't see it. He lost it somewhere. I don't know how. Might have thought it was out of the ballpark. Mm -hmm. Nearly hit him on top of the head. And that one cost his team another run. You don't see that happen all that much in this ballpark. I mean, guys don't generally lose fly balls that high in the air. And Segura is costing his team a couple of runs tonight. I should say Heise. Now, Ron Renneke went out to see if Heise had touched that ball to make it go over and out. It did hit, it looked like and sounded like it hit the wall, then came back down, hit the top padding of the wall and then went out. But Renneke wants to know if there was any contact and they're going to take a look at it here. The crew chief Brian Gorman has put the headset on. He'll communicate with the replay command center in New York. I'm not sure if we have a different angle to give him but 
It was a little bit of a strange bounce as it hit the ground and then hit the face of the wall and then landed on top of the wall before it trickled out. Let's see if we can track it here. Let's see if it bounces off that back wall. So the ball hits in front of the wall, then comes down. It just bounces straight up. Question is, did Heisey touch it here? That's about as good as look as you're going to get. Great job by our crew. Zeroing in on that. So crew chief review, Brian Gorman took a look or asked to have it looked at, and it'll be a ground rule double. So Gomez at second. A quick challenge. Wasn't even a challenge. Officially a crew chief review. And back at play we go. Scooter Jeanette with Gomez at second base. And the catcher Mezzarocco asked for and is granted timeout. Wouldn't put it past Gomez to take off here. Even though there are two outs. He's been known. And Frazier's playing way off the bag at third base. Jeanette pulls one foul. Well, if he does go, he better make it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're ready in scoring position with a couple of outs. And with his speed, anything that hits in the outfield, he's going to be able to score. Brewers lead 4 0. They've scored some runs in some very strange ways. Got an error by Santiago, which was just a tough break for the red second baseman. And Chris Heisey with a couple of misplays and left. Misjudged the line drive by Braun, leading to two runs. And then lost that one in the twilight, leading to a two out run here in the fourth. Oh, and two to Jeanette. I mean, how many times have you seen that? I mean, I've seen just about every game in this ballpark, and you don't see guys lose fly ball. Line drives, yes. You know, sometimes they lose them in the light. Sometimes they lose them in those glass panels out there. But something that high, that doesn't happen very often. Chris Heisey shaking his head. There's so much structure up there with the, the roof right, right. that you don't typically have to deal with. The twilight sky for an outfielder. Gomez goes and Mezzarocco lets him run. Carlos steals third base without a throw. Well, now he can score on an infield hit. Stolen base number 18 of the year for Gomez. Big, big lead over there at second base with Frazier playing off the bag. Mezzarocco didn't even bother. One ball, two strikes. Down in the dirt, Mezzarocco blocks, puts a little more heat on those breaking balls in yep. the dirt with Gomez at third. He can score on a wild pitch, a pass ball, a balk, infield hit, an error. Five ways you can score from third base that you can't from second. Two and two to Jeanette. A run is in. Four nothing crew. Play in the bottom of the fourth. Latos deals and Jeanette pulls one foul. Well, Scooter with a chance to add to the lead here. He's driven in 34 this year. He's hit eight homers. Showing a surprising power. And remember, he's a platoon player with Ricky Week, so he's not playing every day. Typically only against right handed starting pitchers. Every now and then he'll face a lefty, usually in relief. The 2 2. And Jeanette pulls one off the glove of Lutz, a race to the bag, and Jeanette is safe. Gomez is in. That was one of the ways you can score from third that you can't from second. Up an error. 
That's probably going to be an error on the first baseman, Donald Lutz. They tried to take it on the backhand, and Jeanette able to beat the throw at first base. Well, and you could almost see the reaction of Matt Latos as he's getting to the bag. The Reds have not helped him much yeah. at all. Defense has been dreadful. So five nothing Brewers. And now Ryan Braun at the plate with Jeanette at first. Well, they haven't scored that last ground ball yet, but I can't imagine that's a base hit. Check Braun at the plate presented by Wendy's two for two with a two run double. That was last inning. And Braun takes one low. Pitch count up there for Latos. His defense is failing him tonight. And this is the best defensive team in the National League, but a lot of their pieces defensively are not playing. Latos doing all he can to keep things organized in his brain. You know he is fuming right now. He's given up some hard hit balls not to take him off the hook at all. The Brewers have swung the bat well. But there have been some key misplays that have led to the five runs. Yep, I see a couple of bad plays in left. The air that you know, the baseball that hit Segura in the foot. And now the play by Lutz that they have not scored yet. There's still just one error on the board. Jeanette with a good lead at first. Starts then stops and Braun fouls it away. One and two to Braun. Ryan's pushed his batting average up over 300. With his two hits tonight he's hitting 303. And the uh, the scoring just popped on the screen in the outfield. That is going to be a base hit for Jeanette. Wow, hitting an error. So I should say hitting an RBI. That is a generous ruling over at first base. So five runs on eight hits. Latos delivers a one two Jeanette on the run the pitch is outside throw to second he is late stolen base for Scooter Jeanette and Brewers are putting all kinds of pressure on the Reds and Matt Latos tonight Yeah, good throw, but just late. Had a good jump on late toast. You're not able to steal it. Actually hit him right in the leg. Wow. Tell you that that's a good example of why a feet first slide is becoming more and more important. With the uh, added layer of replay and a lot of infielders are dropping their legs right in on the sliding lane. If you go ahead first, you're looking at injury. This Leto strikes out Braun. And the inning is over, but a, another run scoring frame. The Brewers get two more, and it's 5 0.
Five nothing lead as we move to the top of the fifth inning. Time to check in with the crew in the community in support of the mayor's fatherhood initiative to bring together the past, present, and future by raising awareness about the importance of involved, responsible, and committed fathers. The Brewers will host a group of fathers and their child at the Brewers game tonight. A lucky father and child from the crew was able to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. A big initiative, and we support it 100 percent. Great work by the Brewers Community Foundation. Five nothing our score. The Brewers have the lead. Willie Peralta with four shutout innings, and Ramon Santiago leads the way for Cincinnati. Bottom of the order coming up. Peralta coming off his best inning. Three up, three down, with two strikeouts in the fourth. And he's got Santiago Cozart and the pitcher Matt Latos. St. Louis is off tonight. Brewers trying to pick up a half game and go back into first place all by themselves with a win tonight. Cardinals lost to the Dodgers last night. And the Dodgers were not happy about the inside pitching of the St. Louis Cardinals. Knocked not one but two superstars out of the lineup. First it was Yasiel Puig and then last night Hanley Ramirez got hit by a pitch. That set up Adrian Gonzalez's game winning RBI base hit. And the Dodgers salvaged the final game of that series. The Cardinals took two out of three. Brewers dropped two out of three. The Cardinal pitching staff, I think, third in the league in hitting batters. I mean, they do establish inside, they like to pitch in. One and two to Santiago inside missed with a fastball. Yeah Mike Matheny was. He made no apologies at all. I said we will continue to pitch inside. Nothing wrong with it. No absolutely not. And when you have velocity like the Cardinals do. Why wouldn't you. Well, it doesn't even matter if you have velocity. I think that you know the less velocity you have the more important it is to pitch inside. Keep guys off your off speed stuff. I mean, every pitcher wants to get you out of way, but you have to show a hitter you're going to throw for throw strikes inside. Keep them honest in there. Pirates aren't afraid to drill you. Santiago pulls one foul. As a matter of fact, the Dodgers are in Pittsburgh tonight. Los Angeles leads the Pirates five to two in the eighth inning. And Hanley Ramirez is out of the lineup, as is Yasiel Pui. Neither playing in tonight's game. A little lazy swing and an easy out for Segura. 6 3 put out. One away in the fifth. Six in a row. Make it seven in a row for Peralta. Take you back to our carsuit.com trivia. The question was how many current Brewers have had multiple stints with the team. And now that Jeremy Jeffers is back, he is one of three. Lyle Overbay, long gap between his tenure with the Brewers. And Frankie Rodriguez traded to the Orioles, re signing with the Brewers. The longest gap between appearances in the Stints with the Brewers belongs to Doug Jones. 14 years. It's amazing. Doug Jones, his last year with the Brewers, the first time around was in 1982. And then he came back to join the Brewers in 96. Yeah. Had 36 saves in 97. I caught Doug Jones down in the minor leagues. Didn't throw any harder back then either. <laughs> at the beginning of his career and at the end of his career, 14 years. Yeah. I think the most notable name of Brewers that have circled back and had a second tenure would be Jim Slayton. You ever get a chance, dig up the numbers on Jim Slayton. He had a great career. Yes, he did. Brewers career leader in victories. Innings pitch starts. He's up there amongst leaders. Fly ball to right. Kozart is retired. Two outs. Yes, yeah, Slayton. And the first time around, his last year was 71. He came back 
in the early 80s for the Brewers. 79, actually 77 was his last year, I beg your pardon. And then uh, was gone one year in Detroit, I believe. Came back in 79. I caught Pops one year, 83. Pops. Was his nickname. Nice. Pops and Rock. Yeah. Rock Pops. <laughs> Pop Rocks. <laughs> 83 my first year I got caught up in July. And I hit my triple very similar to the one that Segura got today. You just kept running. I would have been dead out at third base. I was so excited kept running. Hit me right in the back. I love the way you said that too. It's a perfect way to say that. I hit my triple. One and only. In his first game in the big leagues. Yeah. Right? Or first your first hit. hit. First hit. Right. Yeah. My triple. And I would have been more out than Segura would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Could you even remember it? I mean, you must have been just floating around the bases. Absolutely. Was that, a, that was in Arlington, wasn't it? Yeah. Hit the ball over Billy Sample's head. Danny Darwin was a pitcher. I remember a little bit about it. Davey Garcia, the third base coach. I looked up right at the last minute when I rounded second. <laughs> Hands up, both of them. <laughs> And I said, I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> two and two to Litos. Right off the hands. Peralta rocking and rolling here. Three up, three down inning again. Five nothing Brewers. We go to the bottom of the fifth. All eyes were on Gilbert Lara here at Miller Park today. The 16-year-old Dominican prospect was in town here for his physical, took batting practice, was also on the field to take ground balls. He was considered the fourth best international prospect according to MLB.com. The Brewers signed him to a minor league contract and a $3.2 million signing bonus, showing off that raw power that had scouts and Eduardo Brizuela, the director of Latin American operations for the Brewers, so excited and uh, he, Lara, to his credit, said he was very thankful, very excited for the opportunity. He has been to the United States before, but it was his first time here in Milwaukee and in town for his first major league game. So very excited about the opportunity to be here today. And as for what is next for him, he'll spend some time at the Brewers Dominican Academy, and uh, they're hoping to get him ready for spring training next year. Brian? All right, Sophia, thanks. Aramis Ramirez sends one to deep left center for the out. Sophia spent some time in the Dominican Republic um, this offseason, certainly knows that setup there. And Eduardo Brizuela deserves a lot of credit for the work he's done, the director of Latin American operations. And Sophia, I'm, I'm curious to know how Lara will begin to acclimate to 
Major League Baseball but also minor league baseball. How's his English and how do you see him uh, over the next few months as he starts to begin his pro career. He's still only 16 years of age. Yeah, he is still just 16 years old, but very impressive. He did um, use a translator. Eduardo translated for him when he was speaking to the media today. But one of the things that the academy does such a great job of is preparing them for life in baseball. Um, the academy is structured just like minor league camp, just like spring training. They do all of the same fundamentals. They teach them English classes, also go through some etiquette and protocol training. So they do a fantastic job to get them ready to come over stateside and, and work their way up the minor league system. Well, it's a great program. And uh, the Brewers, you know, for a long time did not have much of a presence in Latin America and in the Dominican Republic. You remember Solomon Torres? Oh, yeah. The Brewers uh, rent the academy that uh, he has set up there. So Solomon has uh, a few baseball academies down in the Dominican Republic and a great relationship there and I think about that young man huh 16 years old Dominican Republic already has two over two million dollars. That's amazing. I mean think about how excited that kid must be. He can't play you know over here yet. He can't play in the minor leagues until he's 17. So he goes back to the Dominican Academy. He continues to work out and plays in some inner squad games and next year the Brewers will place him in the minor league system. That is the, is the most significant international signing the Brewers have had to date. And there was a lot of proud baseball operations personnel from the top down. Doug Melvin all the way down. A lot of scouts. A lot of hard work goes into that. Believe me. Yeah. Luke Croy skies to shallow right. That's Santiago to make the catch. And the Reds fans are saying if only the Reds could have made that play yesterday <laughs> they might have won the game. Yeah. Another misjudged fly ball or a booted fly ball. They've had a couple of those tonight. Not playing like the best defensive team in the National League. Brewers up 5 nothing as we play in the bottom of the fifth. Two quick outs for Latos. I got here early today. I was up in the booth watching that young man take batting practice. He was launching him out of here. 16 years old. Wooden bat. Second deck out and left. It's incredible, right? He's the a talent is a big kid, and he's a shortstop with a great arm. And it's so hard to project whether he's going to be a big league player or not. But all the tools that that you look for are in place. So we'll see. As Schaefer tomahawks one down the right field line, and that's foul. Well, he's a shortstop now. He might not end up as a shortstop. We'll see. I mean, he's so young. He's Got a lot of growing up to do, and well, he looks 16 too. It's a most unusual process in uh, Latin America to get a player signed, almost like a college recruiting. Uh, Schaefer grounds out, best inning for Latos, three up and three down in the fifth.
Milwaukee Brewers Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Lite, now in the original can, it's Miller time. Well, been a good night so far for the Brew Crew. They lead 5-0 against their division rivals, a team they have struggled against this year. Losing 7 out of 10, but Willie Peralta had one of his best games of the season against the Reds in eight shutout innings. Through five shutout here tonight, and that is going to end right here and now as Billy Hamilton goes deep. You've got to be kidding me. This guy has been on a home run binge against Milwaukee this season. That's his fourth home run against the Brewers this year, and he's only got six. Man. He turned around at 95 mile an hour fastball that time from Willie Peralta. His other home runs are coming off speed pitches, change ups, but boy, he turns that one around. Well, first blemish for Willie Peralta. First hit of the night for Hamilton and showing very surprising power against the Brewers. Let's get it. Hit two here at Miller Park in the last series. Had a home run in the series in Cincinnati over the 4th of July weekend. Goes deep again and now Schumacher, a little cue shot, fair ball. Logan Schaefer over to cut it off and a, might have a play at second. The throw, the tag, safe. Schumacher just got in there. Jeanette saying he got him out. Now we'll take a look at it. The tag might have been a bit, a little bit high. Uh, Skip Schumacher, a little jam shot, slice job down the line. They got him on the toe. I think that's what Jeanette is saying. That that lead toe this is going to be a great look at it here. Missed him there. Yeah. So not sure you have enough to overturn it, but look at the second base umpire, Chris Segal, right on it. I mean, he's in perfect position. Did the foot. See, he's on top of Jeanette's foot. I think that's what Scooter is saying. But he never actually touched the base. But I don't know if there's enough video evidence. I don't know. I tell you, Rocky, his right foot never really got to the base. Oh, yeah. His foot uh, got right on the edge of Jeanette now as it hit the side of the base. Let's see. I don't know. I mean, that's uh, pretty close. Well, they're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Renicky will issue the challenge here. Looks like he slid right into Scooter's foot. And it's going to be very interesting uh, what they decide here in New York. This call, this call, call could go any, either way. And you don't really start to see where Schumacher's foot is until Jeanette raises his up. And then you can tell that there's no contact there. It's right on top of it. Foot on foot. Question is, does he get the bag anywhere? This is going to be an interesting one here. This is bang, bang. And I could see it going either way. I'm ready. He's saying he's out. He's out. We'll see. Pretty close. John Shelby is the Brewers. That was a good throw by Coach. Logan Schaefer, though. Great throw by Schaefer. Just to make it close. Shelby in the Brewers clubhouse taking a look at these replays and he gives the thumbs up or down to Jerry Naren. He slides right on his foot it looks like. We're showing it in super slow motion and phantom cam here in the scoreboard at Miller Park. Now it's out of the hands of the field umpires now it's back in New York and they're taking a look at it calling umpire Chris Segal facing us here the crew chief Brian Gorman is communicating with the umpire assigned to this game and uh, they can ask for help there are a number of umpires and umpire supervisors available to take a look at this play in New York we had a nice tour of that facility 
earlier this season when we were in New York, got the chance to see how the stations work and mm -hmm. how they can call on an umpire supervisor to get more eyes on it. By time the tag was put on the knee, I guess the decision to make was uh, Schumacher's foot at, at all on the base anywhere. Yeah, well, if he didn't slide into his foot, he would have been safe. There's no question about that. Question is, I guess, in New York, did any part of Schumacher's foot touch the bag? And that's where it becomes clear and convincing evidence. And that's the language that uh, they use. And because the call on the field was safe, there has to be enough to overturn it and you can tell there is a lot of debate on this call just by the duration of this challenge right the longer it goes the more likely it is that they might overturn it doesn't mean they will but if Jeanette's foot's not there and Schumacher doesn't slide into his foot he's definitely safe because he didn't touch the toe right there ah, they're going to call him safe so after all of that not enough to overturn it. But worth a try. Renicki will lose his challenge. So the play stands. Schumacher is in with a double. It's five to one Brewers. A home run to start this inning by Hamilton. Schumacher doubles and now Todd Frazier. And a long delay there. Peralta did some light tossing during that delay. Three minutes, 17 seconds on the delay. We had the Commissioner Selig on the air with us a couple of homestands ago, and he was uh, talking about the average length of time on challenges was less than a minute. There's a jam shot. Segura coming in, got to get rid of it quickly. Does so and Frazier is out. Man, that's a good pitch. 96 on the fists. That's where you got to pitch a guy like Frazier. He likes to drive that ball to the opposite field, get those arms extended. And just ate him up. Next batter, 39, the catcher, Kevin well, Frazier is out. Schumacher advances. Peralta's been able to pitch inside very effectively tonight, especially against Frazier. When it just eats him up inside, it's exactly where Luke Corey wanted it. He wanted it in, he put it there, and he got the out. Devin Mezzarocco with a runner at third. Back inside goes Peralta, and he goes. Brian Gorman raises the thumb. Strike one. Back inside again. 0 oh, and to the count. You see early in the game, Willie was very effective with the slider away. Now he's changing it up a little bit, third time through. Starting to establish inside with that big heavy sinker. A two seamer boring in on these in the hands of this right-handed lineup. Lucroy wanted another one. Peralta shakes him off. 0 oh, and to the count. And the block by Lucroy, he did not go this time. Checked his swing. Slider in the dirt. Lucroy saves a run. Pitchers have so much confidence in Lucroy to block his tough breaking balls in the dirt. Man, that could have gone either way. And this time he goes, and Mezzarocco is close to getting tossed out here. I'm surprised he's still in the game. Yeah. Mezzarocco in the face of David Rackley, called out on a swinging strike. Well, he could have got called up, called on the last one, and Rackley's saying, all right, next check swing, I'm ringing you up. There's a lot of umpires that would throw out a player after an argument like that, a snap. And Mazzarocco still barking. 
And now Brian Price may go, and he does. Their nonchalant ejection by David Rackley. Well, the only thing that Price is talking about is, you know, hopefully an umpire, why don't you ask for help before you ring up my guy? I mean, it's a tough call. It's one of the umpire's toughest calls behind home plate. A lot of times I'll wait and ask for help from the first base umpire. Didn't do it. He did it himself. That's the argument. Not whether he went or not. Why didn't you ask for help? Well, and Price now delaying this argument. Brian Gorman coming in. And now Price will give Gorman an earful as well. You can't throw a, a, a manager out twice. <laughs> Gorman's asking him to leave. But that's a big strikeout for Willie Peralta. Man at third, less than two outs. He gets the punch out. Ooh, I don't think he went as much as he did on the one before. I agree with you. <laughs> the one before was more likely to be called a strike. It looks like that time he held up. Phantom Cam never lies. That's close. Yeah, it is. About the same as the other one. Now you can understand the argument of Price and Mezzarocco, but it goes in the Brewers' favor. Who knows? Gorman may have rung him up anyway. But now two outs. Runner still at third base. And here's Donald Lutz and a strike. Schumacher doubled after the home run by Hamilton. Went to third on a ground out. Still at third after the strikeout. I'll be curious to see Mezzarocco when he goes back behind the plate and his conversation with the home plate umpire Rackley in close, awkward proximity next inning. Oh, and two on Lutz. Maybe that's why he didn't get rung up. Or why he didn't throw him out. They give your catcher a little bit more leeway. These guys build a rapport throughout the game, throughout a season. Oh, and two. Peralta trying to finish off this inning. Down and in. Breaking ball. Lucroy keeps it in front. One ball, two strikes on Lutz. Willie with four strikeouts. Just gave up his first run, a leadoff home run by Hamilton. Two and two. Big runner to leave stranded for Peralta. Two balls, two strikes. Willie delivers and a big cut and a foul. 98 mile an hour fastball from Peralta. And best one of the night. Probably picked up a couple of miles per hour as it hit the mask of Lucroy. Pretty much right down the middle, hit the glove, hit the mask. Mm. Double jeopardy for Jonathan Lucroy. That's why it is so impressive what Lucroy's been able to do offensively. Any catcher to hit like Lucroy has this year, considering the pounding they take behind the plate. Look at that play. Another one down in the dirt. Lucroy. Keeps Schumacher at third. Count goes full now to Lutz. Amazing job. The way he blocks pitches. Very rarely does he let one get by. The best in the big leagues, as a matter of fact, in that category. Potential wild pitches. Anything in the dirt. Lucroy has more blocks than any other catcher in baseball. 
swing and a miss. He got him his best one yet, a 90 mile an hour slider. And Peralta strikes out Mezzarocco and Lutz to end the inning. Reds get a run, but that's it. As Peralta with his fifth K. Five to one Brewers. We head to the home half of the sixth. Reds just scoring on a Billy Hamilton homer. Latos back on the mound for Cincinnati. As promised earlier in the broadcast, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag WISFANPHOTO for a chance to have it shown. Trisha sends this one. A mutt in Brewer gear. Always a great chance to get on the air. It's a good-looking dog. It's all brought to you by AT&T. Good job, Trisha. Make sure you use that hashtag with fan photo. So here we go to the bottom of the sixth. Mezzarocco back behind the dish. I've been watching them, Rock. No communication yet. They're uh, icing each yeah, other. It's a little bit of uh, silence as Mark Reynolds leads off. I think Mezzarocco should feel fortunate that he didn't get run out of the ball game. So. If he should have, if he should do anything, it probably thank the home plate umpire. Thanks for keeping me in. <laughs> A lot of guys would get thrown out. Yeah. You know, with that reaction. I'm laughing because I had an experience when I was uh, when I was in college, and uh, nothing, of course, like the big leagues, but that awkward feeling behind the plate. So I transferred from one college. To another after my sophomore year. And the head coach of the, the school that I transferred from was not happy about it. His name was Jim Mallon. Mm -hmm. But he was also an umpire. So when we would play uh, in the summer leagues, it, I happened to be catching a game that he was the home plate umpire for, and I hadn't seen him right. since I transferred. We uh, made up after that, but for four innings, there was Nothing. no no discussion whatsoever. Yeah, that's awkward. And it was really awkward and weird. And you know, I tend to want to have to gab a little bit. Right. Really. So yeah. As Reynolds lines one to third, and Frazier makes the play. Tough luck for Mark Reynolds. Anyway, after the fourth inning, uh, I blocked the ball. And he goes, "Good job." <laughs> that was the only words we had the whole game. Broke the ice though. Yeah, broke the ice. Well, Gene Segura, he's in our Southwest Airlines non-stoppable play, third inning. This was a big one in a scoreless game. Segura probably ill-advised to try to take third base. But the cutoff and relay, the throw from Santiago hit the foot of Segura, and it bounced into the dugout. So it was a triple and an error, and the Brewers had their first run. And it's been that kind of night.
for the Brewers with uh, some shoddy Cincinnati defense. Although you can't really pin that one on Santiago. Right. I had a game in the big leagues uh, had struck out a few times and you know in sixth inning already three strikeouts and I got really upset on a caught third strike Remember Kirk Kaiser. Sure. Former uh, wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. And I started going nose to nose with him a little bit walking back to home plate and he said I'm not throwing you out. I want to see how many times you strike out today. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what a great comeback. Yeah. Yeah. He was uh, he got the best of me. Gosh. I just I just I just had to laugh. That was a good line. That was a great line. Did you really laugh or were you so fumed up? That was that would be impressive. That's good. How, what was the what was the temperature behind home plate when you went back there to catch? I just said that's a great line, man. Thanks. <laughs> that was good. So you're a little flare. That's going to slice foul in the seats. Good old Ken Kaiser. Ken Kaiser. That's what umpires, you know, you could have a chat with them. You know, you could uh, you know, go back and forth a little bit. No pitch tracks on those umpires. No. In a nice zone. They could get you. You wonder why guys used to swing early in the count. Ground ball to short. Segura to Kozart. Kozart makes a play for the out. They get a 10 to 2 game. Anything catchable is a strike. Now, Bruce Fremmy, if he's listening, he's going to be texting me saying that's not true. Even though he knows it is. <laughs> he knows it's true. <laughs> yeah, you want to look at all of the uh, elements that have increased time of game. That's one of them. You get in some of those blowout games, and that strike zone will get bigger and bigger. Players knew that, right? You guys yeah. go up there swinging. Get up there hacking, boys. Not anymore. Now, well, Willie Peralta has done some damage offensively tonight. He singled in a 10 pitch at bat in the third inning. That was the three run third. Had a good base running move in that inning did Peralta tagging up on a fly ball to left left center. And scored a run. Only his third hit of the season. Inching closer to the interstate he's hitting 088. 0 02 on the way. And a called strike three Peralta strikes out. And suddenly Latos he is locked in. Five to one Brewers. We're on our way to the seventh. Seventh inning, first game of this three game series with Cincinnati. 
And we're back at it tomorrow. Our Miller Lite What's on Tap, Homer Bailey against Jimmy Nelson. So Jimmy will get a third chance, his second start in this particular run in the big leagues. He made a start, got a win in his first start earlier in the year in Miami. And he'll be back at it tomorrow. Jimmy Nelson doing his homework tonight, watching Willie Peralta go after the Reds. Well, very similar stuff the two of them have. You know, the big fastball, the slider. Rough outing against the Cardinals. That was on the Saturday before the All-Star game. Or the All-Star break. Well, dominated triple A. Really couldn't do anything more there to earn a call up. And he's, he's going to get a chance. An extended chance here to prove what he can do in the big leagues. We'll see him tomorrow on our Miller Lite What's on Tap. Chris Heisey will lead off. He's had a tough day today. Heisey struck out his last time up, got called out on strikes. He's had a couple of miscues in the outfield. Started all three games of that last series against the Yankees. And is in there once again tonight. No Ryan Ludwig. Popped him up. Foul territory. And Mark Reynolds is there. One away. Hey, fans, reserve your spot for the Brewers' fourth free T-shirt Friday. That's this Friday coming up when the Brewers take on the Mets to make sure you receive your free Brewers T-shirt courtesy of Quick Trip. Call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com today. The Mets will be here Friday. Is that the T-shirt you gave away? Yep, that's the one. I gave Telly's away. Kept one for myself, of course. By the way, the uh, starting pitching matchup Friday is a good one. Giovanni Gallardo against Zach Wheeler. Four game series with the Mets following this three gamer with the Reds. Brewers would like to start cutting into that season series deficit against Cincinnati. Uh, it's important for the Brewers to have a good home stand. I mean, whichever way they're able to work it, but you got to start turning things around and winning games and putting the pressure on the other teams in this division. Brewers went one and six on their last homestand and had to win the final game of that homestand to salvage one. Put it in the rearview mirror though. It's all about what's ahead after tonight. 62 games remaining. This is game number 100 tonight. Peralta looks sharp again giving up just the one run. One gone in the seventh. Bouncing ball to Reynolds. Peralta is there and two outs. That's some defensive swings against Willie Peralta tonight. A good movement on all of his pitches. He's been able to command his slider very nicely. And he's got that fastball that seems to be boring in on those right handed batters tonight. Two seamer, four seamer, good location. And the location is the impressive thing given eight days between starts. Yep. Two outs here is Cozart who takes a strike. That's Jay Bruce on deck. So Latos will be out. And Cincinnati has Carlos Contreras in their bullpen. The Dodgers just finished off the Pirates tonight, a 5 2 win. So, Los Angeles beating the Cardinals last night and then opening up with a win against Pittsburgh tonight. Could be a great day for the Brewers in the National League Central if they can take this one to the finish line. St. Louis is off tonight. Cardinals. Start up a series at home tomorrow with Tampa Bay, the red hot Rays. Segura backhands, fires one across in time. Gene Segura showing off all the skills tonight. What a gun. Made it look easy. Three up and three down for Peralta in the seventh.
tonight, and it has been some shoddy defense by Cincinnati. The Brewers have hit the ball hard, but that was a key one. Let two runs in. Gomez to left field. Heisey lost it in the twilight. A ground rule double in an RBI. And then an error by Donald Lutz leading to another run. Five to one, Milwaukee, as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, three of the five runs scored by the Brewers should not have come across. A couple of misplays by Heisey and Lutz. There was Jay Bell running the ball club now after Brian Price was ejected. Latos continues on here. There was a a bit earlier in this game. It looked like Latos might not be able to get through three, maybe four innings, but he's dialed it in here. He's retired six in a row. Since that error that led to a run by Lutz. Actually seven straight, I beg your pardon. Seven in a row. Facing the top of the order at Gomez, who has two hits tonight. Gomez drove it a run on that ball that Heisey lost. 50 RBIs for Carlos Gomez. Got sawed off and a pop up. Frazier wants it. Out number one. Hey, Brewers fans voted and they've chosen Jim Henderson as this year's fan vote bobblehead. At Sunday, July 27th, the Brewers host the Mets and all fans will get a Jim Henderson bobblehead. Courtesy of Chevrolet, call 414 902 4000 or go to Brewers.com today. No, nope. Jim Henderson on the comeback trail. Been on the disabled list since May 2nd with a shoulder injury. Starting to throw. He threw a couple of days ago, got his fastball up to about 95 miles an hour, pitched a scoreless inning down in the minor leagues. Due to come off the disabled list, he can come off what about first week in August, right? He was actually uh, transferred to the 60 day DL, which opens up a roster spot. That's how Jeremy Jeffries uh, was put on the big league roster. Might see Jeffries tonight. We'll see how the game goes. But that would be a huge hit for the Brewers if they could get Henderson back, a healthy Henderson. I mean, of all the pitchers that are available that you could make a trade for and go acquire. There's none going to be better than a healthy Jim Henderson. Right. The way he threw last year. So there's a big if, though, whether he's going to be able to come back. There's a base hit. Jeanette. Scooter Jeanette with a single with one away off Latos. By the way, they went back and reversed the call on Jeanette in the fourth. It was ruled an error. Scored it as a hit briefly and then changed back to an error. So. That's his first hit of the night. Yeah, initially, they uh, thought that you know Latos didn't get over in time to cover first base. They gave him an error, but upon further review, up in the press box, it was deemed an error. And Jeanette, with a nice inside-out stroke and a fastball middle in, dumped it into center field. So a base runner for Braun as the Brewers try to keep the heat on Cincinnati. They need a knockout punch in this inning here. Get a couple of runs. Braun with two hits off Latos. Drove in two in the third. Now 56 runs batted in. He's the club leader in that category and has pushed his way into the top 10 in the league. You got two at the top of the National League in RBIs John Carlos Stanton and Paul Goldsmith with 65. Man, Brony not that far behind, is he? He's currently tied for eight. He's tied with Casey McGee, as a matter of fact, with 56. LeBron with 12 home runs on the Powerball home run leaderboard. Chris Davis still the club leader with 16. Reynolds and Gomez with 14. Braun hit number 12 in D.C. A couple of days ago. Up 
A ball and a strike on Braun. One and two. Leto struck him out his last time up. He got him with a slider. Down and away. Braun waved at it. See what he gives him here. One and two the count. And Braun right off the end of the bat. Schumacher for out number two. So two gone. Jeanette still at first. And it'll be Aramis Ramirez. Ramirez just missed one his last time up. So Chris Heise deep in the left, left center. Ramirez was hit by a pitch in the third. He's 0 for 2. And up there, aggressive. Fouls it away. Coming off his second All Star start at third base, but the first time voted in by the fans. And had a great day. Couple of nice defensive plays, couple of hits. Line shot foul. And Brewers certainly did their part in trying to get a home field advantage for the World Series. Four hits combined, a squirrely sitting out of the bullpen. Couple of RBIs. The Brewers would love the chance to prove what a good road team they are in the World Series. <laughs> they certainly have given themselves a chance. Tied for first. Mazzarocco, an excellent catcher defensively as well. An emerging star in the big leagues, Mazzarocco. One ball, two strikes. Ramirez hoping to do some damage here with two outs. Got to give Latos a lot of credit. He has muscled his way through. If his defense helped him at all tonight, this game would be a lot closer. Be a two to one game. Ball and two strikes. Jeanette takes off. Ramirez pulls one foul. A breaking ball from Latos. At 100 pitches for Latos. A very rough third and fourth inning, basically because of his defense. Two Reds errors tonight. Five runs, four earned against Latos. One ball, two strikes. Ramirez lays off. Another good play by Mezzarocco. Hardly noticeable as you go through a game. It doesn't show up in the box score. But when you have two catchers like this, like Lucroy and Mezzarocco, and the pitches they're blocking. I mean, Lucroy 
You think about Peralta's inning in the sixth after the leadoff homer. Lucroy helped save that inning. He kept the run from coming across a couple of times. And just the overall confidence of a pitcher. You talk about that all the time. It's not just the fact that he's blocking pitches and you put Mezzarocco in that category tonight with Latos. But when they know they can snap off that nasty breaking ball, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, you're not going to hang a pitch. So you can't do it any better than that. No. Not fundamentals. That's what it's all about. And Lucroy, Mezzarocco, two of the best. And Mazzarocco doing his best to keep Jeanette at first base. Now the count is full, though. Ramirez not biting on a couple of breaking balls in the dirt. Jeanette will be off with the pitch. There he goes. Latos deals, and Ramirez fouls it away. Ramos is approaching a milestone in games played. Two games shy after tonight of 2,000 career Major League games. 17 year career. And he has spent his entire career in the National League Central. Pirates, Cubs, third year with the Brewers. Another payoff. Jeanette starts up and Ramirez rolls over one. Frazier across the diamond for the out. The inning is over. Latos gives Cincinnati seven. Will exit trailing 5 1. We go to the eighth. A seven game homestand for the Brew Crew up five to one. Hey, tonight's time of the game winner, winner, Yellow River Saloon and Eatery in Webster. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a 2014 Brewers home game. We saw for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. New pitcher for the Brew Crew is Will Smith. So Willie Peralta out after seven strong. Gives up just one earned run on just three hits. And now Renicki will give the ball to Smith for the eighth and a 5 1 Brewer lead. That pitch yesterday and tossed a scoreless eighth inning in Washington and got uh, three strikeouts in the process. Was not available on Friday after the All Star break. Had some back spasms. But threw very well in yesterday's ball game. Great numbers for Will. 51st game for him. And more strikeouts and innings pitched. 58 punch outs in just shy of 50, 45 innings of work. Going to be the end of the night for Latos as well. 
As Chris Negron will pinch hit for Cincinnati. So both starters go seven innings. Latos gives up eight hits, five runs, four earned. Peralta just one earned run with five strikeouts. Willie's ERA drops to 358. And he's got a chance to win his 11th game of the season. Now he's had some nice starts against the Reds this year. And he won back in May, did not allow a run, and gave up only one run tonight. Well, if the Brewers can finish it off, Peralta would be the top winner on the ball club. He and Los right now tied with 10 wins apiece. Six outs to get. And the ground leads off. Pinch hitting in the pitcher's spot. And a drive into right center field. That ball is hit very well. And it's out of here. Negron goes deep. Just his second home run. And just like that, Cincinnati is within three. Well, that didn't take long. One pitch from Smith. And it's gone. I think about the two guys who've hit home runs tonight for Cincinnati. And Billy Hamilton now Negron. Two guys you don't expect to hit long balls, but there they are. Fastball just trying to get ahead in the count and the groan gives it everything he's got and drives it out of here to the opposite field. Billy Hamilton the switch hitter. Who homer to lead off the sixth inning. Christopher Negron a pinch hit home run. He can't even believe it. Reaction in the dugout. Hamilton drops a bunt down forget it. A base hit for Hamilton. And suddenly the Reds. Putting a little something together offensively here in the eighth inning. Well, push bunt towards second base and. And once it gets by the pitcher there's no chance for anybody to make a play on Billy Hamilton. Brandon Kensler getting loose. Well, you wonder if Billy Hamilton will try to steal a base here. He's second in the league in stolen bases, but he's been caught 15 times. That leads all of baseball. And yeah. you got a left handed pitcher out there. Sometimes you're not as able to get as good a jump. Well, it's a 5 2 game in the eighth. Smith got off to that great start for the Brewers was nearly unhittable through the first two and a half months of the season but he's run into some trouble here lately and giving up the home run ball lately. Schumacher with two more hits tonight. Playing right field for Bruce. Snap throw to first. Hamilton just back. Oh, and to the count. Good breaking ball from Smith. Yeah, that breaking pitch for Will Smith has been very good against lefties. Keeps it down and away. That one at 82 miles an hour. Got him. Smith strikes out Schumacher. And a big K for the first out of the eighth. Started it right at him and able to catch the inside edge with it. Completely fooled him. Check it out. It was supposed to be away, but nope. Pretty much right down the middle, and Schumacher knew it.
Not where you want it, but pretty effective right that time. Check on Hamilton again. Thirty eight steals. Second only to D. Gordon. All star second baseman of the Dodgers, who has forty four stolen bases. And certainly a game changer when he gets on base. It's a lot of problems for you. Pitcher has to pay a lot of attention to him. The defense is on edge, thinking he's going to take off. Smith has a good move. He's been a starter coming up through the Royals minor league system. The Royals actually used him as a starter last year, so a, a more polished move to first than most late inning relievers. But with a three run lead, you certainly don't want to spend right. a whole lot of energy on Hamilton. And just getting ready to say that uh, that hitter can hurt you a lot more than that base runner, particularly when you have a lead. One ball, one strike on Frazier. Check on Billy Hamilton again. Will Smith went his first 75 games this year only gave up or the first 75 team games I should say only given up one home run thirty four games for Will Smith just allowing the one homer that was back in April against the Pirates but He's given up three home runs now in his last 11 games. Appearances might be catching up to him a bit. He's been out there a lot. Ball and a strike. Tough hitter at the plate in Frazier. And that's outside two and one. It's hard to pitch as well as he did early in the season throughout the entire year. I mean, that's how good he was. He was. Unhittable. Swing and a miss. That's the equalizer right there, the slider. Looks like a fastball out of his hand. Hitters just don't pick it up all that well. When he keeps it down there, not going to do much with it. Two and two the count on Frazier. Brewers looking for a ground ball and a swing and a miss. So Frazier strikes out. He is 0 for 4 tonight. And Smith gets back to back K's. Two outs in the eighth. On hanging sliders right here. This is not where he wanted it. That was right down the middle up in the strike zone. Same place where that he got Schumacher. Sometimes a bad pitch ends up. As a good result for you. Two outs. Mazzarocco at the plate. Another breaking ball misses low. Will Smith coming off three scoreless outings. Struck out the side his last time out against Washington. He had had three outings to start the month of July, giving up runs. Matter of fact, he had given up nine earned runs in three outings. Gave up five in one game without recording an out against Philadelphia. So that that's a little bit of the ERA buster, and he still has a very good ERA at 302 coming in. But most of the runs he has allowed this year came in that one outing. Five of his 16 earned runs he's given up this season in that game against the Phillies on the last homestand. Mm -hmm. 
Ryan Ludwig on deck. Would hit for Lutz. Chris Negron with a pinch hit homer to start this inning. 5 2 Brewers. We play in the eighth with two outs. And a 3 0 is in there. And last thing you want to do is walk the tying run to home play. You draw a walk here and Ryan Ludwig on deck. Certainly enough power to tie this one up. And make him as Araco hit it. Got a hitter's count. And he put it by him. 95 mile an hour fastball. Full count to Mezzarocco. That's going to put Hamilton on the move at first. And decision time for Will Smith. This is ordinarily when he throws that slider. Let's see what he has in mind. Full count, two outs. Hamilton goes and a swing and a miss. He struck him out with a fastball. Will Smith. Strikes out three in a row after a homer and a bunt single to start the inning. And it's 5 2 Milwaukee. Smith, a quick bounce back in the eighth. Two lead as we go to the bottom of the eighth over the Reds. We're getting set for Brewers Live post game coming up right after the ball game. Of course, Willie Peralta, big topic of conversation. Augie, what did you like out of Willie tonight? Well, I think he did the same thing he did right towards the last game, right before the play, the All Star break. Went out there, got aggressive in the strike zone. I like what he pitched tonight because he really used all his pitches. He had a good slider and he really used the fastball. Uh, very well in the strike zone tonight. Boy, well, really settled in about midway through his innings as well. Seven strong innings for Peralta. Just the one earned run. Couple of walks, but did strike out five. So, Willie Peralta trying to win number 11 on the season. Brewers got to hang on, though. A 5 2 lead. We'll hear from Peralta, Ron Renneke, maybe Jonathan Lucor, and the rest of the Brew crew coming up in just a bit, Brian. All right, Craig and Augie, thank you. Looking forward to Brewers Live post game. As Luke Croy strides to the plate and a 5 2 Milwaukee lead. New pitcher rock is Carlos Contreras. Just his sixth outing of the season for Cincinnati. They got called up from Pensacola on June 21st. The Pensacola Blue Wahoos. Mm -hmm. He was 2 and 1 with a 270 yard run average. Nine appearances down in the minor leagues. Three of those starts. That is double A for the Reds. Right on the ocean, I hear. Yeah. So Brewers getting their first look at Contreras. Luke Croy looking for his first hit of the night. He's 0 for 3. Just to follow up on what Craig and Augie are talking about with Willie Peralta. You know, as you go through a season and 
if the Brewers do end up in the postseason. They start to play well during this stretch and if they win the game tonight. I think you're going to be able to look back. At this. Swing here for the Brewers you know Peralta start last game of the All-Star break beating the Cardinals. And really dominating the Cardinals and then coming back in his first start after the All-Star break. And having a great night against Cincinnati. And if it leads to a victory you're talking about two. Important wins. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen the rest of the season, but if the Brewers do go on to the postseason, I think you'll be able to look back at this stretch for Willie Peralta, and this is going to be a major factor in the season. What did you call uh, coming up big when your team needs you most? They win tonight, and Willie will have seven wins in his last eight decisions. Ooh. And that's how good he's been. Yeah, I won five in a row in the month of June. It's one thing to win games and pitch well. It's another thing to do it against division rivals and teams that you're competing with for a division race. That ball's hit deep right center field. Hamilton going back and he makes the catch. Billy Hamilton leaping, crashing against the wall. Taking a hit away from Jonathan Lucroy. Yep, he's a game changer, no doubt. I mean, he's as good as it gets in center field. Doesn't have the arm nearly of a Carlos Gomez, but well, he can cover a lot of ground. He doesn't play very deep, but look how quickly he gets back there. Knows exactly where he is in the warning track. Takes a quick look and makes that one look easy. Well, for a guy who has not played center field long. I mean, he was a shortstop coming up through the red system, just converted a couple of years ago. Looks like he's been there his entire career. You don't have to have great instincts when you can run like that. I mean, make up for a lot of bad breaks, maybe make a you know, turn yourself around initially, but he's so fast he can make up for any mistake that he makes out there. You can only imagine the type of plays he's going to be able to make when he gets used to playing center field. Logan Schaefer at the plate pulls one foul. Got to give the Reds some credit too. You know they had. Three of the top rated. Minor league shortstops in their system at one time with. Zach Cozart just coming up to the big leagues. You had Didi Gregorius. And Billy Hamilton. So they had. A position that is. Much. In demand is Cozart right on cue. Makes a heck of a play to get Logan Schaefer. Wow. Zach Kozart for out number two. Hey, hey, don't forget this Wednesday Wednesday is a kids and seniors discount day at Miller Park, which means kids 14 and under and seniors 60 plus can save 50% on tickets to the Brewers showdown with the Reds. Call 414-902-4000 or go to Brewers.com slash fan values for tickets. There's Mark Reynolds with two away. Well, the Reds went with Cozart as the guy that they were going to count on as their franchise shortstop. And he shows you why right there. They, they traded can, Gregorius. You can pick it. Great arm. Moved Hamilton to center field. Very solid up the middle with Brandon Phillips. Mezzarocco behind home plate. Best fielding team in the National League, but you wouldn't know it early in the game tonight. Yeah, two errors tonight and two misplays that did not result in errors out in left field. One and two to Reynolds. Well, looking ahead to the Cincinnati ninth. Might see a pinch hitter for Lutz. And then you've got Chris Heisey and Ramon Santiago, a switch hitter. Right now, a save situation. Frankie Rodriguez getting loose. Two balls, two strikes on Reynolds. Three and two it goes.
Reynolds is 0 for 3. Hit a line drive bullet to third his last time up. Caught by Frazier. In the air to left. And playable for Heisey. A little bit off the end of the bat, it sounded like. So that's the inning. Three up, three down for Contreras. It's K Rod time. Save opportunity coming up. That's what Brewers fans are going to be saying if the Brewers can hang on and win this one. It's about time against Cincinnati. It's been a tough draw for Milwaukee this year. They've lost seven out of ten, five to two hour score. Columbia St. Mary save tracker. 28 saves for Frankie Rodriguez. Yeah, picked up number 28 on Friday against the Nationals. Pitched an inning. A couple of strikeouts, but he did give up a home run to Bryce Harper. K Rod is tied for third in the league in saves. He is trailing Trevor Rosenthal and Craig Kimbrell, both with 30 saves apiece. Donald Lutz will lead off for Cincinnati. Reds look like they were going to pinch hit for him last inning with Ludwig with Smith in the game, but with K Rod out there, Lutz stays. And sometimes K Rod. Would prefer to face a left handed batter with his great change up. Yeah, that change up that goes down and away to lefties. Just like that. Lutz, a big power hitter in the minor leagues. Starting at first base for the injured Joey Votto. K-Rod's got him down 0-2. K-Rod can be tough on young hitters. Boy, he challenged him with a fastball, and Lutz was right on it. Yes, he did. He got in on him a little bit. He left it a little bit over the plate, but and because of that changeup, the pitch before, he was able to get it by him. You can do that with a three-run lead. I don't think he does that with a one-run lead. Yeah, that's a good point. You can see his uh, expression when he got a new baseball back. Got away with one. 0 oh and 2 the count. Back to the changeup. 1 and 2. What a year it's been for Frankie Rodriguez, an all-star season. All-star for the first time since 08. Tied a franchise record 
More saves prior to the All-Star break. 27 with Francisco Cordero. The one-two on the way and hit hard into right field. Top spin liner. Braun makes a catch. Had trouble with it in the lights. That ball was smoked. Left a change up upstairs and let's hammer it. Man, good play by Braun to fight it. Coming out of those lights. That ball had a lot of top spin on it. Reminded me of a, of a left handed Jeff Bagwell line drive. This thing just nose dived. Well, Braun wrestling with it all the way. Makes the play for the out and a big one to get that first out on the board. So here's Heisey. Strike one. A little over 31,000 on hand tonight on a Monday night. Big crowds expected all week. Sellouts over the weekend. Make sure you get on the phone. Go online. Get your tickets. Seven game homestand. Reds and the Mets. It's getting good now. Yeah, it it's is. been fun all year, but it's getting good now. <laughs> and next 62 games. Going to be interesting. That's all you can ask for. You know, you come out of spring training. You hope that you're going to be playing meaningful games in August and September. Bouncer to third. Here's Ramirez. Eyes, he's out. Two up, two down for Rodriguez. One to go for Rodriguez. Ramon Santiago switch hitting second baseman at the plate. And this crowd gets on its feet. With one more out, the Brewers would push their record back to 10 games over 55 and 45. In the air, center field, Gomez, long way to go, and he's there, and the ball game is over. One, two, three inning for Francisco Rodriguez, a 5 2 Milwaukee win. Peralta Rock now an 11 game winner, the top winner on the club. He beats Matt Latos as K Rod picks up his 29 save. Well, Matt Latos still has not won a game at Miller Park, 0 3 now, but how about Willie Peralta? He's impressive. Right out of the bullpen, a quick three up, three down inning in the first and continues just to impress the rest of the evening. And he picks up win number 11. Good day for the Brewers in the division as St. Louis is off tonight. The Brewers go back into first place by themselves, 10 games over. Pittsburgh lost to Los Angeles. So it's two and a half up on the Pirates, three and a half up on Cincinnati. Time for Brewers Live. We check in with Craig Kishon. What do you have coming up for us, Craig? Big win tonight to start the homestand that matches their victory total on the last homestand. We'll talk about that here from Ron Renneke. Get inside the clubhouse as well. Catch up with the winner, Willie Peralta. Stay with us.